there would be no better way to finish talking about some stuff on Waveform than without bringing some cars back into the mix. Yeah, the comments asked for more EV stuff. So, like, it, like we've been saying, you know, we can talk about it all day. Uh, <laughs> no, there's some interesting ones. Okay, you 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 dropped this in the Slack yesterday, and I was I had the I had I quite think a negative David reaction. Posted it. Yeah, it was. It's the Lightyear. Um, some new. I mean, the like just. Bring I'll out, read the, bring I'll out the checklist, it. yeah. I'm going to read this tweet first. From It's from Wired. Okay. So I'll just read the tweet. This is the Lightyear Zero, the car that could become the first produced car with solar panels this fall. The Dutch company says it'll be capable of driving around 388 miles without recharging with additional range of up to 44 miles a day from the solar panels. And then some sleek renders that honestly look like dolly renders of uh, a mysterious concept car. <laughs> so, yeah. So, we've talked at length both on the podcast and on the main channel uh about startup EVs. Yeah. Was, so, I'm not even going to get into the when does this ship conversation. This, this checks almost all those boxes. Yeah, yeah, very much so. But uh the solar panel conversation has been interesting. I this has come up before and I don't I don't know if I asked Elon about this or somebody has asked Elon, but just like, "Hey, what do you think about putting like solar panels on, I think this is a cyber truck. Somebody asked about it. Like, what about the, the yeah. tunnel cover? Mm-hmm. Just making it. And the answer really is like, solar panels aren't that efficient yet. And so, with the best solar panel tech that we have today, covering the entire top of the car in solar panels would max you out at like 40 miles of range if you had a sunny day all day and you left it outside the yeah, entire time. I'm imagining it in like uh, Alaska during the summer solstice where they like all don't day. have night. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, that is a best case scenario, which means you're probably going to have some cloudy days where you, you'll have some sunny days where you get lots of range and then you'll have some rainy days where you literally get three miles added to the battery. So this isn't like you're going to just get free energy forever. It's cool it's cool to add this range and it might be convenient for a short commute, but it's, it's to me, I don't want to say gimmick because it's a really useful feature to connect it to the drivetrain like that, but it is very unlikely to make a difference there, to me. There are clearly some like obstacles to overcome in this scenario. I mean, like, so we're talking about 40 miles on a day, which is like best case scenario, right? So like absolute max. So let's just you know, when you think of anything, when they give a number like that, you have to go lower. So let's say in the electric car world, if a car says they get 300 miles of range, they get 270 miles of range. Let's say this is, I'll even be like optimistic and say 35 miles. Sure. Okay. So it, driving a day, you know, maybe there are some people that aren't driving that far in a day. They have a super short commute. There's someone who generally like leases a car. Cool. You might get like totally clean. If, if you park outside, if it's sunny all the time, if you clean your car enough to not affect the solar panels. That's something I always worry about. Do you remember years ago, there was like a Kickstarter for these like solar panel roads oh. and everyone was freaking out about it. And then everybody immediately was just like, do you know how dirty those would get? And just like not it's work just at a all. Brutal logistics question. So yeah. like that's an issue as well. It just like, it comes down to this point of how much extra is the cost going to be onto this? Because like solar panels aren't cheap. You're replacing like pretty easy stamped material. Yeah, it could just be metal or glass. This. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you are taking away, like some people do like moon roofs and stuff. You're taking that away. There's no option for that in this car. It's not adding that much. And you're getting a bunch of extra parts now that could break or something could happen to this. Like a hailstorm on this sounds expensive that's fair like tens of thousands of dollars expensive so it's interesting so i i plan on talking about this pretty soon in a video but in this tech smart home that i've been building Mm -hmm. uh solar panels on a roof yeah it can get hailed on it can get rained on it can have birds land on it it's it's a strong roof and it has solar um it is expensive compared to normal materials and obviously if you do this in a car you don't have a moonroof anymore um but the i think to me more of what i was thinking was do you think you're going to replace charging? Because you you can't. Like, okay, you no. drive to work. Let's say you drive to work. You start with a full battery. You drive to work. It was 30 miles. Great. Now, as it sits at work all day in the sun, you replenish that battery. Then you drive home using that same battery. Mm-hmm. Then what? It sits at night all night. Yeah. So you can't fully drive off solar. Like, that would be the dream. That would be cool. But that's not how solar panels, that's not, we haven't gotten them that good yet. Yeah. And and like, 
So I also, can you click on the website and see this? Because I don't think you've seen the full car and they I show it. And this is the first a, time. I, wanna, I want you to see it because it is a little more than you're expecting. This is the first time. <laughs> it opens up by saying drive for months without charging. Press X okay, to yeah. doubt. Okay. Yeah. Scrolling down. Uh, interesting. So it's yeah. the super teardrop shape. It looks kind of like that Mercedes EQX or whatever. It reminds me of a mix of that. So it has like the really long like hatchback trunk so it can just make so the like the roof of it seamlessly flows all the way down to the trunk and it's all solar panel and then even the hood of the car is a solar, solar. panel so um, they're really leaning into this but do you know what it also reminds me of do you remember when i believe it was the civic or there was a honda hybrid that used to have the wheel cover on the back like this wheel cover on the back for aero oh, oh the yeah, like the yeah, solid yeah. wheel cover over the back so i mean well. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty. It's a sedan with a really long, elongated roof into the trunk, Wait. basically creating as much space as possible for a solar panel. Have you seen the McLaren Speedtail? Mm. Google McLaren Speedtail. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's like th- this is the type of thing where you're like, all right, I need to make this car as aerodynamic and slippery as possible for the longest possible range. You need aero caps. You need a sleek shape <laughs> you need it to slip through the air and i don't care about how bad it looks yeah and you just end up with this shape yeah so okay. fine so it's going to be focused on that it's going to be hopefully super efficient they're advertising lots of range 388 miles of range i mean that in itself is cool without yeah. it um and i do want to say like i like the idea and i hope we can get to the part where solar panels will make a difference because we all know that even though we're using electric vehicles, it doesn't always mean we're using clean energy to charge those vehicles. Mm-hmm. I, it's clearly the step we need to make, but right now there's still a lot of like, just because it's an EV doesn't mean it's fully green. I think right now the better solution is if you really want that clean energy to be charging your car is to have solar panels on your house right. and then you're just charging your EV from that. Yeah, this is where this is the part where I haven't done. I'm just gonna look into the camera and say I don't know this to be true. <laughs> I don't have the research. We are in front not of me. experts. I'm no. not an expert. But from what I understand, the surface area of a car, no matter how efficient, like we only get so much energy from the sun, and it's a lot of energy. But you know, you compare the amount of efficiency of current solar panels. Let's say it's 0.6, and we assume an improvement all the way to perfect efficiency, where we can use all the range. Even if you do get perfect efficiency, you don't have enough surface area to charge and drive a car for very long. So it's it's it'll always basically be relegated to like a cool accessory feature. I think Ellis put in the in the doc here there was a, a Prius back in the day. Well, yeah. So the Wired tweet said that this might be the first production car with solar panels on it, but Not I true. immediately remembered the Karma Rivero that we looked that at a while panels. ago had a solar panel on it, and that was getting even less range added onto the battery. Ellis found was that yeah, adding range Prius. To the battery too? I believe that one was adding range to the battery, but the Karma Rivero is also a weird cis like hybrid system. It might not have even EV. been in production. Yeah. Um <clears throat> but Ellis showed, and this is really cool, I thought, a Prius with a solar panel, but it wasn't connected to the drivetrain. Rather, you could leave your AC running with the car off and not waste gas. Yeah. I think that's awesome. Car I think battery, that's a really car cool battery idea. never dies. Yeah. It's a good hack. That's a really cool idea. I like that feature. Um so yeah. Solar panels, cool. You know, maybe these guys are the, thinking of something different, maybe. But their website doesn't have a lot of information. So I can't say they've yeah. discovered something new with this that could finally bring it. But All I'm saying is there's an order button. All I'm saying <laughs> is uh, we made a video about how if you have a cool idea for an EV that you just make a dope website and great renders and parade one concept car around and collect lots of money. And that's basically what we're seeing here. Uh, 250 euro, you know, order fee, whatever. I, I root for the success of startup EV companies, but I hesitate to like just cheer on every single thing under the moon because, uh, yeah, my initial reaction was this should be an option, not the defining feature well, of the that, car. Well, that's the other thing is like when we talked about price before, this is going to add a lot onto the price and that's going to take people away who aren't looking at super, super high priced vehicles. But the minute you want to offer both of them then on top, you make your production so d- twice as hard because 
you now have to offer two different trims where one has a regular roof and one has a solar roof and this a hood at this point. I guess my question is, would you buy this car if it didn't have the solar feature? I'm right now, no, because I don't know anything yeah, about it there isn't really, in the future. I don't love the look of it yeah. either, but there's like, not a there's, lot of other I, redeeming things about yeah. it. So I'm like, this isn't an option. This is the reason you buy the car. This one. Yeah. I, I do want to like in a broader spectrum, I'm wondering if there is a way solar panels can eventually get put onto an EV. I would assume it would be a pickup truck first because maybe you could have a truck bed cover that could have it that increases hope- uh, surface area a little bit. And like the majority of people using trucks aren't always using the back of the truck. So if you could have a cover and some extra yeah. panels back there, maybe you could add something extra. Somebody in the comments on YouTube, do the napkin math. I bet there's somebody watching this who's like a solar engineer who knows about the efficiency of solar panels. Assume the biggest truck with the most surface area with perfect efficiency of solar panels. How many miles are we looking at in the best case scenario added to a to a car's range? To me, it'll never actually make a difference, but I hope I'm maybe wrong. I feel like the the... Technology we're looking for is advancement in solar panels before we get to the advancement in cars with solar panels. Yeah. You and need, that, that will come eventually. You need amazing drivetrains and battery tech before the solar panel saves the EV. So, I think so, yeah. We'll see. Thanks for watching this clip. This clip was brought to you by uh, Europa, one of the moons of Jupiter. It's uh, one of the only moons with liquid water. Uh, but fun fact, all of that liquid water is underneath the surface of the moon, which is solid, uh, it sometimes has volcanoes of water that sp- plume out into space like a hundred miles. Mm. Uh, really interesting moon. One of the only moons we suspect in our solar system that might have life, but it's just another moon. It's just the size of our moon, you know, just hanging out. I hope they pay well for that ad. Yeah. That was boring. Europa's fascinating. There's so uh. many, I'm on the Wikipedia page right now for it. If you finish watching this clip, I suggest you go check it out. <laughs> Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to go down, leave a comment, and then you're going to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and then command T, and then just Google Europa Wikipedia and just scroll for a while. Just check it out. All right. That's it. See you guys later. I did not approve of this message. (laughs) 